how did I get my internship? I'm going to tell you, but before I do, I'm going to just give you an intro of what I actually do where I work. So I work for a company called Cambridge Consultants. As the name suggests, they're a tech consultancy company. And I'm going to explain what that actually means because I didn't know. So a company, a public one usually comes to them and they're like, yo, we need this thing done, but we don't even have the time or facilities. And we assess that, see if we can do it. And if we can, we're like thumbs up. We do this thing and we get paid for this. So that's how my company runs. Uh, I work as a hardware test engineer. I haven't really been doing any hardware or testing. So currently I'm just doing software engineering. That will hope that will that will change because I've only been here for I think a month now. So I'll update you guys on that. Now a bit of background. So I applied to over 100 jobs. I would say around 40, 50% of them just didn't reply. I just got nothing from them. Or they replied to me after three months after I got the offer. So I'm gonna split this video into four parts. Process, strategy, then the pre-interview and post-interview. Now that's out of the way, let's get into the video. Process. The process took me three months. I started in December, January, February, March, very early March, I remember I accepted it, but I accepted it basically ASAP. That's, I think, the average time it takes. Uh, I know people obviously that got like a job offer in like the third application and other people struggled for six months. So I would say three months is the average. In that time, I had around 15 interviews and one job offer. Throughout the three months, my CV was constantly changing. There was prototypes on prototypes and this was because I was adjusting my CV to the job applications I was going for. With many of the applications there was a cover letter to write which was really annoying because they're super time consuming and half of these companies won't even reply which is really depressing and in the background I was doing an electrical engineering degree. Now the strategy. Very quickly I realized that applying to jobs is an extremely tedious and long process. And I wanted to reduce this time. There were two main things I did to really compress the time it took to get those job applications in. So the first thing I did is I stopped applying to jobs which needed a cover letter because it's just such a long process and most of the times these companies don't even get back to you. So I only made the exception to the companies that I really wanted to work for. And the second thing I did was I just optimized my CV so that the websites that have this like auto filler would catch my CV's details and just room, name, surname, email, address, everything just goes in straight away. I don't have to write it every single time. And I don't, I know this sounds crazy, but when you're applying to 50 jobs, which takes two minutes each, do the maths. It's long. And listen, you're probably thinking, why didn't this guy just use LinkedIn? I know. I know I'm a clown. I just didn't think of it back then because it was... <sighs> Next is pre-interview. Some companies will give you tasks to test your IQ and technical skills. Software jobs very often make you do like a leak code or a hacker rank problem, usually timed and they're usually hard. Dyson made me um, do like a straight on IQ test. They just put like rainbow colors in to make it look cooler. Fujifilm gave me homework on inkjet printers. So it's a bit of a process because you either have to do a lot of research or a lot of practice, but this means usually that the company is good because they are trying to really filter out. So I guess it's higher effort or higher reward type of situation. And the good thing is that at this point, if you get here, that means your CV is good. And now it's up to you to not F up the job. Now the big boy, the interview. The interview is split into two parts. And these splits can either happen between multiple interviews or just in one. All depends on the company. Usually the better the company, the more like stages of interviews there is. I know Inter has three, so I went through it and I didn't get past the first one. Every single interview in this talking stage had one thing in common and there was a deep dive into my CV. And when I mean deep, I mean deep. This is why I keep on banging about the fact that if you don't know your CV, inside out, you are going to fail every single interview you have. In this interview, I was usually speaking with one, two, or max three senior software engineers. And surprisingly, they would pick on these like two, three, small sub bullet points in my CV 
talking about a very specific skill. They would ask so many questions about that. Questions I never even thought about. They would ask, you know, why did you do this instead of this? How did you do it and why? And I think the why questions were very big because they want to see if you really know. I think a good example is when someone asks you, oh, like, why did you write this program with C instead of Python? And you can kind of filter out the people who've programmed long enough because people who've been programming for a while know that C is just such a fast programming language compared to Python. This distinguishes you from other candidates. Keep that in mind. So be prepared to answer a why question for every single bullet point you have. And the second part of the interview is going to be the technical part. There's like three types of question styles that they can give you in the engineering internship world. First of all, the coding ones. Here's a piece of code. How do you fix it? What would you change? What's the algorithm complexity? Sometimes they'll ask, they'll give you a problem, but you have to code in front of them. If you don't know what FizzBuzz is, that means you haven't applied to enough jobs. <laughs> Then there's the stuff you need to remember. Oh my gosh, this is so annoying. It's just memory, it's just memorization. So I would get asked questions like, what's the temperature of a soldering iron? How would you make a blue LED light? How would you create this in the oscilloscope? What button would you press for that? And it's just kind of like stuff you're supposed to pick up during your electrical engineering degree, I guess. But it's just really annoying because it doesn't it just doesn't feel like an interview it just feels like an exam that's how it kind of is sometimes it depends it all depends on the company and then there's the outside the box questions the one where they just blow your mind when you hear them initially like, this is impossible and that's the whole point so a good example of a question like that is estimate the amount of stones on brighton beach this is a question where they just care about how you think uh, these are also common in like Oxbridge, Imperial type of interviews. Just do your best. No one cares about the answer. Everyone just thinks how you're thinking. These are sadly questions you can't really practice. You have actually a lot of impact on the technical stage. You can really get good at those. And I think that's the catch to getting a good internship is to just get good at the technical stuff because I think the soft stuff is easy. You're just talking about yourself and and if you know everything that you wrote in your CV, you'll be completely fine. Other than that, that's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about my internship, let me know. I'll make a day in a live video at some point. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.